everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And today with our sponsor Kathleen, we are back with two sock blanks, two homemade double-stranded sock blanks, and we're gonna cuff these into those donut-like shapes and have some fun dyeing them with commercial acid dyes. I created these blanks using Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 80% superwash fine highland wool, 20% polyamid. And then I used a single knitting machine with two strands to make this thinner blank, and my loops and threads knitting machine to make this wider blank. Starting with the loose bind off end, I am going to cuff these or roll them into a donut. And since the two different blanks have different circumferences and different lengths, both of them are 100 grams, and we will end up with one blank that is sort of loosely wound and one donut that is more tightly wound, which I think will give us some really, really cool differences as we go and dye these blanks. I have a lot more experience dyeing with food coloring than I do with acid dyes. And in particular, I have a lot more experience with food coloring breaking than I do with acid dyes. But um, I think that I have picked a combination of colors that should work beautifully. Uh, one of the colors for today I know breaks um, and takes a while to absorb, so there's a chance that might penetrate towards the center. And the other one doesn't break, um, but I believe will bind a little faster. And so with a combination of these two, hopefully we will create something really, really beautiful for Kathleen. If you would like to learn more about any of the tools or equipment that I used for this video, you can find affiliate links to Nitpicks and Amazon in the video description. In our dedicated dye steam pan, we are starting with 24 cups of water plus two tablespoons of white vinegar. When I did this before with just uh, food coloring. I started with no vinegar to give things time to sort of go to the center, but one of the colors I believe is just going to go to the center, me, <laughs> no matter what. And so, yeah, I just wanted to start with a little acid to sort of help see some of this breaking, maybe. <laughs> For our colors today, we are going to start off with just one tablespoon of purple pop. This is a color that I know, I know breaks um, from more of like a purple to a really, really bright pink, um, but it also takes a long time to exhaust and a little goes a really, really long way. Um, I've recently, and I don't know if that video has come out yet, tried using a whole half cup of it on 100 grams, and whew, that was intense. So let's just try one tablespoon, which is only about 15 milliliters on the 200 grams. Now we know the purple pop will break, but let's add like another element, another hue to this, and so we're gonna add some frozen. And what we have is just about approximately a quarter cup of the 1% stock solution of frozen, um, which will, and I'll probably, yeah, we'll just rinse out the bottle a little bit, get whatever is left inside. Um, but this is giving us sort of this beautiful purple at the beginning. Um, the dye bath is a little bit warm. It's not hot yet though, which is why I can have these plastics in here. Um, but yeah, overall, this is a pretty low amount of acid, but I'm expecting it to sort of give us a very, very bright color. And I'm hoping that we will get some purples and then some bright pinks in the middle. Or white. Um, it's hard to say exactly. Alright, I'm going to turn on the heat 
on low. Um, I'm on top of my gas stove with two burners and we're going to start adding our donuts. And I am sort of pressing them a bit so that way they will soak up some of this color. Ooh, look. Ooh, funny. Even like in here, look at that center. That's pink coming up. Um, that's pretty cool. Which just shows how just how fast some of the stuff might be striking. Um, that we can see that already. Let's get this sort of pressing them down. I know that the tops don't have a ton of liquid on top of them and in a little bit I might increase um, that temperature but I feel like you know I'll probably press on them every so often. The nice thing here is that if the color on the outside doesn't feel like it's deep or intense enough and I wish that there was more color there, then we can always go and add more color in here. We aren't limited to what we're starting with here, but I really did not want to overdo it with the purple pop. Um, and so, yeah, I thought it would be fun to start with this mixture. I am sort of splashing some color on the top, which I might do periodically. And this also sort of helps you see a little bit more that there is like a fair amount of color in here. But I am seeing like a lot more blue on the surface right now than pink, but who knows? It's hard to say if things will react differently to what I've seen before. I did a little paper towel dip, and given that there's so much water in here, the colors are fairly pastel, so it's hard to say for sure what they might do, but we might get some blue with a pink finish. Hopefully! But now let's go ahead and wait, I'd say about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll come back and maybe add more vinegar. It's been between 15 and 20 minutes, and we're definitely hot. I have the heat on low, but you can see some of that bubbling towards the center. And I think at this stage, I need to add a bit more vinegar. Um, the, the colors are a bit darker in person than what I see on camera, but I am seeing some evidence of breaking. I see some like purple there, whereas it's like more blue on the top. And so I'm, I'm excited. I'm now going to add one, two more tablespoons. I have a little bit in here, so like two and a half tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, that's still, what, maybe we're at like four and a half total so far in 24 cups of water. That's still really low. And I'll probably start doing some unmeasured splashes of vinegar at some point. But, uh, yeah, I'm sort of waiting to see like what we see on the outside. And if I do a check-in on the watercolor, the watercolor is feeling sort of purpley to me, which is pretty cool. So anyway, we'll be back in, I think, another 15 minutes. Okay, things are definitely still feeling fairly purple out here. Maybe it's like pinkish. Um, it's definitely, there's a different color in the bath than what we are seeing on sort of here on the outside. Ooh, I definitely, there's like blue, there is purple. Uh, I feel like, you know, the colors may not be as intense as what we were going for, but there's still just a ton of color out here. So let's add some more acid. One, two, three, that's another four tablespoons of white vinegar. Yeah, let's make it five since that's what I had aliquoted out in this cup. Um, and now, you know, we're going to give this another 20 minutes and see if things are still feeling a bit the same or if we're starting to absorb some more of this color. I'm not really seeing any significant changes. I mean, what's left, there's like this a bunch of pink. 
I'm gonna move things around now. Ooh, I see some really cool stuff going on towards the bottom. Um, I'm gonna just sort of move it around. Um, you know, we want we want to give stuff a chance to absorb. The heat's been on low. I'm gonna turn it up, and I am gonna add some huge and healthy splashes of vinegar, not measured, because I want to give this sort of an opportunity to bind. And I'm curious, okay, yeah, this is not very hot. Like I can put my finger, you know, I can put my finger in it and it's not too hot. So I will bring the heat up so that way things sort of get nice and bubbly and then I will reduce it back down to low. But, um, and you know, moving things around a little bit, that can help sometimes. It's been in here long enough that I feel okay just sort of like moving stuff around. Uh, but yeah, once, once we start getting bubbles, I'll then go and reduce the heat again. Um, but yeah, we'll be back in 40 minutes. I know our sponsor Kathleen has a preference for bright colors. And honestly, and I'm turning off the heat now, I considered adding more purple pop in here because I'm nervous that the colors might feel medium or muted, um, but we haven't opened it up. We don't know what's inside. We just know what's on the outside. There is some pale pink left in the dye bath, but I'm gonna now let this cool, if not completely cool a lot, so that way we can unwrap our little donuts and see what the yarn looks like inside. Ultimately, if I wish the color were brighter once we see what the blinks look like, I could always over dye them. But the pale pink in this dye bath barely even registers on this spoon. Um, so most of all that color is in the yarn. The dye bath has actually cleared a lot. Maybe it's the different angle or the fact that we have let these cool completely. Ooh, okay, so ooh, this is gonna be so pretty. Um, ooh, ooh, Yeah, I'm seeing purple and blue and pink. Let me go get rid of this. So here are our two blanks. I guess here's the bottom side, and we can see sort of this deep blue and hints of pink. I can already tell we'll have some cool modeling when we unravel them. And the tops have this more pastel area. Ooh, I'm so excited. Let's unravel them. Ooh, so we've got this, this pink in here. Ooh, and over here, I'm not sure, oh, I guess you can kind of see. So it's like pink on one side, but it looks like the other side is blue. So this is gonna be like pink and blue speckled in here, which is awesome. Um, oh, this is so pretty. So, so, so pretty. So we've got, you know, uh, oh, this is just beautiful. I'm not sure how bright it is, but, and we use like purple pop is a neon color, but yeah, it's also not a pastel. Okay, let's do the tighter wound one. And there we definitely have some pastel pink showing up. Ooh, but that's a bright blue. But again, in this area right here, um, and I'm seeing if you can see, but we've got, you could see the pale pink, but when it's stretched out, there's that blue behind it, which means that it's just gonna be speckled and awesome. Ooh. Okay, so this has, a little warmer towards the center. Um, yeah, I think that the new color that the tighter wound blank brings into us is a few more pastels. So if these, if this is all used together, um, that has the potential to create something really, really beautiful. Um, this one has more purple that sort of disappears and then some patches of this pale pink that I think get further apart. Oh, this is great. I would say that like, yeah, going from starting at this end 
and going down to like here and working through that could be just like you can make some really awesome tall socks um, a really really great symmetrical shawl Ooh, I love this we will get take a closer look at these blanks um, once they've dried but right now I just want to wash them and yeah that water is looking really clear to me uh, we might see some bleeding once we add a little bit of soap, but I'm actually feeling really, really optimistic here. I am really, really happy with how these came out, but also, we mixed one color. Look at this breaking! I mean, this is such a great example, and I think that the fact that when you roll these out, they get pulled so taut, just leads to some of the most beautiful, unique speckling effects. More so even than when you use a normal blank, because I think that pulling it taut um, adds more resist. But anyway, I'm going to rinse this a couple more times, and then put the blanks through my Unicef spin dryer and hang them up to dry. I don't think I will ever get tired of this technique. These sort of gradient stripe effects that we get on the blanks are just unbelievably cool. And then when you zoom in, and you stretch out the stitches and you see that, you know, we see all this pink on the top and all of that blue behind them and just know, I mean, you can see here as I pull it apart a little bit that we're gonna have some beautiful resist marks on this yarn. I am so excited to see how this will look unraveled. The colors aren't as bright as I was hoping, but we have some beautiful medium tones. And probably the thing about this that's the funniest is that it's so much the reverse of when we break Wilton's Violet food coloring, where we have the red strike first and then the blue strike after. Here we had the blue strike first and then the purples, or sorry, the pinks strike after. Um, and I just love, you know, Clearly, our colors broke here. We have blue, purple, hot pink, and pale pink. I, I just love it. And now I'm gonna go unravel this yarn onto my PVC pipe Nitty Knotties. This is amazing. And it is so worth making your own DIY blanks to get this kind of effect. On the tighter wound blank, you can see that like the, the blue and purple sort of stripes, the speckles, get smaller and smaller as you go from one end to the other. And the pink sort of does a reverse. We have bigger sections of pink and those get smaller and smaller going the other direction. The striping patterns aren't quite as like extreme or like as much of a gradient on the looser wound cake, but we have this beautiful bright pink with this deeper blue and purple. And these speckles are all just so delightful. And I think that one of the things that's really, really great here is that you can go from, say, start at this end, go here, and then go back through the to the next one. And these could be blended together in a really, really great way. And so the set of four 50 gram skeins could turn into something so unbelievably spectacular. Kathleen, I hope that you are as excited as I am about this yarn right now. Pulling the two in a little closer together where we have one skein than the other. I mean, this is just, they complement each other so, so well. And it's just blows my mind that we dyed these in one pot with one mixture of dye. This is absolutely without question the best example of breaking with a commercial acid dye that I've seen to date. Just a little look at the loosely wound blank and the more tightly wound blank. In both of these the area at the very top was the yarn that was at the most interior of this uh, of this DIY blank that I made. All I know is I am so excited to play more with this technique in the future, and there is no question that it's worth making my own blanks to do it. I suppose that you could take a commercial blank 
and sort of whip stitch the two sides together to make a tube and then roll it up to get a similar sort of effect. It wouldn't be identical because it wouldn't be truly made in the round, but I think that that's something that I'm gonna to need to try to see how close we can get to this kind of effect. This yarn almost feels like it's glazed with blue, which is not the order that we're used to seeing this in. The yarn is now off the Nitty Knotties, and you can see that it's still sort of crimped. It's a little wavy because it was in a blank form and then dried in a blank form. So immediately once I finish filming this conclusion, I'm gonna go soak this in some water so that way we can help this crimp relax to make it more manageable to knit or crochet with uh, in the end. Kathleen, thank you so, so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. It was my absolute pleasure to play around uh, with this experiment and give breaking with acid dyes a really fair shot. Um, there's a few other colors I now know that might end up working pretty well with this kind of technique. And so I'm just so much so excited to explore acid dyes like this more in the future. If you would like to learn more about sponsoring an episode of Dye Pout Weekly, which is a really fun way to get sort of a custom mystery yarn. Uh, you'll get multiple shout outs in the episode. You pick the yarn base, either 100 or 200 grams, and I you give me some colors to avoid, and then I design a project with you in mind. And I think that it's just so, so much fun and is a really great way to support the content here on this channel. And if sponsorship isn't your thing, there are a few other ways you can support Chemnitz. Uh, you can check out the rest of the Etsy shop and find hundreds of skeins of hand-dyed yarn. Or you can go check out the Chemnitz Patreon, um, where you can get early access to new content, behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, and more. You can find links to all of this in the video description and iCard. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching this episode of Dye Pot Weekly.